We're gonna be diving into one of the biggest cases that is happening right now in Korea. It's a man named Lee Ki Young. He is a 30 year old man and they're comparing him and calling him the real life parasite. They believe that he could have been a mass killer, but thank God he was caught early due to a lot of CCTV, making it more accessible to report cases. Now, why this guy's case is blowing up is because his past is so bizarre. Important to talk about someone like this because a parasite like him could be living among us. And yes, like a parasite, the movie we're comparing to. And this guy has been dating so many people and bringing so many people into his life that yes, there were hundreds of people that was in contact with a dangerous man like Lee. This video was unplanned, so there's new information coming out daily. So today, let's just go throughout the timeline. And as you guys know, the YouTube algorithm has been very, very tough recently. I love delivering these cases to you guys because there's a lot of cases that are not in English. So I spent a lot of time translating them and putting this video together for you guys just just a like leaving a comment about today's topic subscribing and hitting the notification bell all of this really helps me so that we can continue bringing awareness to important cases like this around the world and yes i did get a new mic so let me know if you guys are feeling this new mic quality so during christmas it's supposed to be a day of celebration warmth with your family but in christmas of 2022 a female would report to the police claiming that inside of her boyfriend apartment closets she found a body and this happened on Christmas Day 2022 so pretty recently so when police went to this apartment that they got a report on they went to the closet and indeed they did find a man in his 60s completely deceased and this man turned out to be again a man in his 60s who was a taxi driver for a living and his family actually have been looking for him for a couple days now because their father wasn't coming home so what happened now the person who was living in this apartment and the reporter's boyfriend was a man named E. Ki Young come to find out on December 20th Lee was drinking with his girlfriend's parents his current girlfriend's parents and trying to like get to know the parents better you know being a good boyfriend possibly getting married and things like that so lee got drunk had some soju and decided to go home driving drunk now it seems like previously he has done this many times and he was caught with dui two times and he was sentenced to even probation or prison sentencing and if you're found again it's going to be even a longer punishment now this particular day after his girlfriend's meeting he decided to still drive drunk and this is when the accident happened with the taxi driver he was making an illegal right turn on a red and it seems like on the green the taxi was going straight forward and crashed into to Lee's car. Now in this exact accident video, apparently Lee told the taxi driver to not call the police and he'll give him cash for a mediation or settlement on the spot. And we will later find out why he really did not want to call the police other than his previous DUI reasons. So Lee instructed the taxi driver to come with him to his Paju apartment and he'll give him a lump sum of cash that he had stashed in his house. Now who does this as an MZ generation, like a 30 year old having a lump of cash in his house like that's not really common unless he was doing something illegal and of course later we'll find out that this was absolutely false he had no money in the house now regardless the taxi driver agreed and came to lee's apartment came all the way inside now according to lee his version of story is that the taxi driver requested for a substantial amount of money for mediation and the taxi driver decided to call 112 or the emergency number to call the police report it if Lee was unwilling to give him the money that the taxi driver requested. Now Lee says that he got angry that it was too much money in the spot in the moment he decided to unalive a the taxi driver again this is according to lee we'll later find out that lee is not a credible person at all now obviously the family was in desperation looking for their father who was not coming home they would send him messages call him on his phone and apparently they did get a message a reply i don't have batteries on my phone i can't reply i don't want to come home of course later we'll find out that the person who was replying was actually lee pretending to be taxi driver now during the five days that short five days from the 20th to 25th when the body was discovered apparently lee stole a's personal information his credit cards and decided to take out a loan under his name for about forty thousand dollars in loan he would also use this money to buy his girlfriend couple ring stay in expensive hotels and food and etc now when obviously lee was taking it into custody for questioning this was just the surface 
the scratch to the surface that they were gonna find out about this guy and how scary this normal looking guy was. Now, when police was interrogating Lee about the victim and the taxi driver, they found out that the apartment that Lee was living in was under someone else's name. The apartment was under a woman named Miss J who was in her 50s. When police questioned who is Miss J, how are you related to her and where is she? Because she could not be found anywhere and she was not living in the apartment and they didn't know who this was. Lee explained to them this woman, Miss J in her 50s, 50s was actually Lee's previous girlfriend that he lived with. And out of nowhere, he confessed that he killed her back in August. And this is where we get to the keyword parasite, like the movie. I'm sure you guys have seen the movie where there's like unknown man and people living under the roof of this family. And they're kind of like sucking the life out of this family without their knowledge. So this man, Lee, was living under his girlfriend's apartment, sucking her money, finances, her house, and eventually ended up unaliving her. Now the case gets really weird and odd because according to the neighbors, it seems like Lee and Miss J were in a relationship since April of 2022 till August. So it was about four months and the neighbors report to each other calling them honey and baby. So it seems like they were really in a relationship. But again, it's really odd that Miss J was over 20 years older than Lee, which tells you a little more information about the odd situations that Lee put himself in. When police was looking for Miss J's body, Lee claimed that he disposed her in a nearby Paju River slash an empty landmass. So currently the police are still looking for Miss J's body. It's not really that big of a landmass either. On top of that, it seems like Lee was pretending to be Miss J just like the taxi driver, changing her cacao profile picture multiple times to let people know that she's alive. She would respond to her family and friends that was worried about her and he would say that, you know, I can't talk on the phone right now. I'm busy. I'm going through things. So her family and friends actually thought that she was alive. Police also found that after August, when she passed, he took out loan under her name and used all of her credits up to about $15,000. Another mystery here um, could be a possible motive for the killing. It seems like Lee and Miss J had some kind of a personal contract. Lee owed Miss J about $200,000 and he promised to pay her. Now they are investigating what this is all about, but as you can see, Lee is attached to money. They were in a relationship for only four months, you guys. That is super early. Like four months is nothing. And to have Miss J possibly loan Lee a substantial amount of money and to be living together and she's 20 plus years older, like something just is, is not right here. Recently, he has changed of where the body was disposed. At first, he said that he threw the body into the river. Police were looking for it. It's not really that deep either, and they can't find it. And Lee recently changed that he dug it into the land. Now, apparently when Lee changed of where the body was disposed, he stated, this is my last present to the police. Um, he believes that he is above the police. He believes that he is in total control of this narrative. Why don't you just confess where the body's buried? According to professionals, they do this potentially because they might be exposing themselves to more lies. For example, if Miss J's body is found, they do an autopsy on her body and it does not match the story of what Lee gave them or possibly even more crimes. Maybe he did something extra to the body or when she was alive, you never know, so they don't don't want that to be revealed. It could also be a way of controlling the narrative, controlling the police and investigators. At least he has a secret and police need him to open up. So it's like a little bit of a power dynamic they still like to play even after they have been arrested. Now it gets even weirder with Lee. Hours before he was arrested, he was seen approaching random guys in their 20s. There was about six guys in their 20s. He approached them randomly, telling them he was this wealthy guy his family has buildings and he came from like crazy backgrounds, crazy rich Asian kind of story. And he told them that I'll buy you kogi or meat, Korean barbecue. I'll buy you some drinks. So obviously guys in their early 20s, I believe, or mid 20s, I mean, random person is saying that like, I'll buy you kogi, you know, it's Christmas. You know, Korean has that sharing culture. So I guess they believe that it was fine to go with this guy. And they're a bunch of guys. Lee seems like a cool dude. As you see, this guy, he doesn't look like a monster. He 
looks so normal. And his neighbors who lived in that apartment says that Lee was very well respected. Like he bowed really well to older people. He was always smiling and he seemed like a total normal, respectful young gentleman. According to the guys, the six guys, apparently what they talked about in the table was even stranger. Lee told them again that he had a lot of money and that he could pay them like millions of dollars and would ask them, would you kill someone for millions of dollars? And after they leave the restaurant, you see on the CCTV that all of a sudden he started a fight with them. According to them, they said he was like a monster that they could not get through to or talk to. And he was in his own little world. People who have known Lee in the past came forward with information that he was actually also married two times in the past. Um, and apparently he also has a child. And then in 2018, he would get married to another woman. And as you could see here, there are photos, evidence that he was married in 2018. From how I feel, marriages in South Korea is a big deal. Like there's nice venues, it's a lot of money. I'm thinking like, how did this guy even trick all these people? How, where did he even get the money? Because apparently they found out that he's jobless. His parents, his family, his grandmother, all different stories that he told to all different people was all false. He had no money. He didn't have millions of dollars. His family did not own buildings and corporations. He was a jobless man. He was literally a parasite sucking off of other people's finances and money. And that's just how he lived. And he was lying to every single person around him in order to build this life that was completely non-existent. According to the most recent news, the story about his first wife and having a kid does not exist. It was actually his friend's kid that he was claiming that was his kid. It is so confusing. Again, we don't know to what extent Lee's truth and lies are. Police also say that within the year in 2022, he was in contact with over 380 people and they're rechecking to see if everybody can be reached and is fine and that there's no more victims. First of all, 380 people in one year is a lot and is constantly seeking either validation or attention from people and he's constantly trying to like suck people's energy and life out of them. I mean, for me in 2022, including my friends and family, including new people, I was probably in contact with literally less than 15 people probably. Also, it's being reported that police are finding multiple girlfriends that he had that he just met like very shortly. And apparently before this girlfriend that reported him to the police, there was another girlfriend that he shortly lived with for about a week. And before that was the woman that he killed. Lee is claiming that there are no more victims and police are trying to fact check that. The most recent report is that they found four different DNA samples from Lee's apartment. One being a male DNA, obviously being the taxi driver. They also found three other DNA that belongs to females. They're checking right now, but they do believe that two DNAs could be one of his most recent girlfriend and one of the victim that he unalived. And one female DNA that they cannot find out who she is right now. It could be a maid that he hired to clean in the past. So what does this all mean for Lee and who this guy is? So they believe that Lee has an intense craving for financial gain, but the way he does it is by unaliving victims. According to one home inspector that remembers going to Lee's house, he remembers that Lee, all of their strangers, first of all, and out of nowhere, Lee told his home inspector, my parents just passed away. I have a big amounts of money coming in. And honestly, the home inspector guy was like, I've never asked you anything. I don't know you. I don't know why you're telling me that. Like, why are you flaunting your wealth and your business to a random stranger? Like, okay. So with all this reported information, experts believe that he could be showing signs of something called Ripley's syndrome. People might be a little more familiar with this word because it was shown in the new hit drama called The Second Anna. Ripley's syndrome is an antisocial personality disorder where someone believes about the lie they created for themselves. They cannot come into terms or believe that their real reality is real. Some signs of Ripley syndrome is listed as repeated deception and lies. Be manipulative to get what you want. Disobeying the rules, committing a crime, tends to be impulsive, be arrogant and think himself superior to others, lack empathy and cannot respect others 
having bad relationship with other people, even tends to hurt your partner or others. Irresponsible, being rude, such as temperamental, threatening, insulting, and cursing. But beyond personality disorder, they are going to do a psychopath test on Yi Giyong to see where he lies in the psychopath range. But I personally also have met compulsive liars. Um, both of them were female, actually. And I remember one of this females, she was an actress. And she was so pretty, you guys. She was so pretty, skinny, you know, that perfect Korean beauty image. And I just remember her constantly talking about herself. She doesn't even care about what you say she just constantly non-stop talks and i'm like where do you even get the energy she told me that also she was really close to this very famous actor in korea and how they went to school together her brother her family owns this and that and like she just constantly non-stop talked about herself and later we found out that everything she was saying was false it absolutely gives shivers down in my spine because she could have done something to me in the future and used me to get what she wanted. I'm not saying that she's a criminal or bad person, but I do think that these people really need help. We've also seen Netflix's Anna story. That movie is also about a woman completely making things about her family, her finances, and she somehow steals the money, resources from other people to feed her life when everything she talked about herself was completely fake. In Korea, even revealing the suspect's identity and their face is a big deal. So the fact that they revealed this guy's face, they knew who they're dealing with. They know that they're dealing with someone very dangerous. People find it scary that Lee is only 30 years old and he's completely made his life so complicated and lived such a twisted, complicated lifestyle that nobody can figure out who actually he is. And just like a parasite, these people walk a among us and leech off of us and sometimes you don't know until it's too late so i'll keep you guys updated if there's any new information about lee but i just thought that this story was so crazy thank you so much for watching remember to leave a comment down below like and subscribing it really helps to hit the algorithm on my channel see you in my next video